We're going to talk about something now that I can only assume most people in our audience are going to have a pretty strong reaction to. As you no doubt know, many of the recent headlines about police shootings uh, have led to and have been precipitated by discussions about racial bias in policing. In other words, are police disproportionately targeting or dealing with non-white suspects and individuals differently by and large than they are with white suspects. A new paper has come out claiming that it found no racial bias whatsoever in police shootings, which is understandably coming as a shock to many people. Now, I really want to make sure that I am clear here so that everybody understands my position on this, because both the paper and the situation are very complex. So let's start with the big picture. Oftentimes, police shooting numbers are compared to populations to make claims about bias. For example, in 2016, black people were 26 percent of those shot by police, but black people make up only 13 percent of the U.S. population, thus racial bias. Now, hold on a second, though. Does that really make sense? I am not married to any conclusion. I really want to think through the data. Police aren't necessarily interacting with people in proportion to their population. This analysis might, might be a good starting point if 13 percent of police interactions were with black people, right? If black people are 13 percent of the population and 13 percent of police interactions and 26 percent of those shot by police, now we might have something to go on. But that is not the case. The counterpoint to this, because the reality is that indeed police interactions are skewed more towards non white populations, including African Americans. If you consider that for whatever reason, and we can have a conversation about what those reasons are, there are more interactions with black people by police, then it would actually make sense that the percentage of police shootings of black people would be higher relative to their population without necessarily indicating that there is racial bias. So let's do another example, Lewis. If black people, in spite of being 13 percent of the population, are committing 26 percent of the crimes, hypothetical, right, or having 26 percent of the police interactions, then it might make perfect sense why they are 26 percent of those shot by police. Now, these are hypothetical numbers and these are sort of basic questions that anyone with fundamental critical thinking skills must ask. And often these things are not asked. And thus we have broad statements, generalizations made that don't make any sense. The problem and the complication is that, uh, as some people emailed me, uh, uh, people say, well, black people are committing more crime than white people. Well, hold on a second. Why is the crime rate higher for black people? Are non white areas policed more aggressively? Are certain groups more likely to be charged with certain crimes than other groups, raising the so called crime rate on paper? This could apply to anything from turnstile jumpers at subway stations in big cities, which we know is very racially tinged, etc. The problem with looking at crime rates is that the crime rates themselves are representative of bias in policing. But there's a counterpoint to that as well, Lewis, which is just focus on violent crime, then not so-called petty crime that might be more subject to police bias. OK, that's the sort of setup for this conversation. Now we have a study from Harvard. The study from Harvard looked at police shootings and it is making huge headlines. It was conducted by an African-American professor at Harvard, Roland Fryer, who started looking into this after a number of these really high profile, high publicity national stories like Freddie Gray, Michael Brown, many of the ones you and I have heard of and covered. And the study confirms that, yes, actually, black men and black women are more likely to be touched, to be handcuffed, to be pushed to the ground or pepper sprayed by police officers than white people, even when adjusting for where and when they encounter police. But when it comes to police shootings, the study found no evidence of racial bias. The study didn't say whether any specific shooting that you or I covered uh, that was in the news was motivated by racial bias, but it made general statements. The results are absolutely fascinating, Lewis. But like John Johnson told us in our interview yesterday, look at the methodology and think it through. And there are some pretty serious critiques to make here. Number one, 
The study was based on data from police reports from 10 locations in the U.S., three in Texas, Los Angeles, Orlando, Jacksonville, and four other Florida counties. In shootings in these cities involving Hold police on. officers. I have a question. Yeah. Are we talking 10 individual incidents or no, 10 no, 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 no. cities? 10 locations. Okay, 10 locations. Providing data about police shootings. Okay. Officers in these 10 cities were more likely to fire their weapons without first having been attacked. They were more often to have fired their weapons when the suspects were white versus when they were black. But. Police shootings are only part of the picture. What about situations where an officer might be expected to fire but didn't? Well, the study also looked at situations where lethal force might have been justified, but ultimately no shots were fired. And it found that, for example, in Houston, officers were 20 percent less likely to shoot if the suspects were black. Case closed, right, Lewis? No racial bias in police shootings. Well, let's look at that methodology, right? The study, number one, relied on reports filled out by police officers. This is a self-selected set of police departments willing to share these reports. Departments willing to share this information are much more likely to be departments where this is not a problem. Thus, this is definitely a question mark around this study. Yes, that is uh, uh, right there. That is enough for me to just uh, not even look at the rest of this thing, but we probably should. The other caveat is that these were based on the reports from police departments themselves. And we have a quote that relates to this. The study of uh, uh, the, the people who did the study themselves made this clear, saying our results have several important caveats. First of all, first, all but one data set was provided by a select group of police departments. It is possible that these departments only supplied the data because they are either enlightened or were not concerned about what the analysis would reveal. In essence, this is equivalent to analyzing labor market discrimination on a set of firms willing to supply a researcher with their human resources data. So this is a really, really important caveat, Lewis. Uh, and, and further, we also have to consider that the analysis takes as a starting point police interactions. It doesn't even try to differentiate the rates at which these interactions occur between groups. So there's a very basic math issue, which is if you think about black people having more interactions with police, but having lethal shootings at the same rate per interaction as whites, when you look at that data, it will give you a very distorted picture of what this actually means. So what can we actually say? Well, we're doing our own investigation into this. We are going to come to you with the results. My prediction is the truth will be somewhere in the middle, sort of like with the gender pay gap. When we did that analysis about the gender pay gap, you have on one hand people who say women make 77 cents for every dollar a man makes. You have on the other side of the spectrum those who say there is no gender pay gap. And our investigation revealed there is a gender pay gap. It's about nine to ten cents on the dollar. In other words, uh, women are making between 90 and 91 cents on the dollar relative to men. Some of the super hardcore feminists didn't like those results. And the men's rights activist, anti feminist, also didn't like the results. But my sense, Lewis, is that with most of these issues, the truth is so, sort of somewhere in the middle. Uh, right. But in this case, somewhere in the middle is that, yes, there is bias. It, in these police shootings and policing in general across the country. Yeah, we will uh, do the investigation and we will have an extensive report for you when we have that data.